The title of our presentation is Development and Usefulness of a District Health Systems Tool for Performance Improvement in Essential Public Health Functions in Mozambique. This presentation is by Claudia Pereira and Sergio Chicumbi. Background. In Mozambique, the Ministry of Health's Strategic Plan for the Instituto Nacional de Saúde, INS, 2002-2014, was organized around eight strategic areas, the majority of which was directly associated with one or more essential public health functions. Given the demographic, geographic, and socioeconomic characteristics of Mozambique, the decentralization and improvement of public health offices at the district level, that is sub-provincial, the so-called Servicios Distritais de Saúde, Mulher e Ação Social, were deemed to be of extreme importance for reaching the goals contained in the strategic plan. Objectives To describe the development of a self-audit tool for public health in Mozambique. Present the methodology used for implementing a district health system self-audit tool that can provide quantitative data on how district governments perceive their performance of the essential public health functions. The study the study is comprised of three phases, stakeholders meetings, instrument development, and pilot testing the instruments in the field. The study was conducted from January 2012 to August 2014 and was led by a team from the Johns Hopkins University and J. Pigo, with funding and oversight by the CDC in partnership with the Ministry of Health in Mozambique. Here we describe the stakeholders meeting. Development began with introductory meetings at Ministry Headquarters, Mizau, in Maputo, to identify any existing efforts aimed at addressing the performance of districts in order to avoid any duplication. Representatives from all departments of Mizau, staff from, from district health offices, and representatives from key partnering organizations and high-level MISAO officials were invited to the meetings. Eligibility to be included as a stakeholder was determined by the Chief of Public Health from INS MISAO and was based on familiarity with public health practice. These meetings were attended by representatives of the INS, provincial directors, and the National Ministry of Health, MISAO. Here are some photos of the meeting held in August 2012 in Maputo. In August 2012, representatives from these entities came together to attend a full-day workshop devoted to identifying which public health functions were indeed essential at the district level in the country. Meetings were recorded on an audio recorder as well as note takers from Johns Hopkins University and J. Pigo, and were facilitated by the team from Johns Hopkins University and the INS, Instituto Nacional de Saúde. National stakeholder meetings were attended by 40 people. At the meeting, a set of candidate public health functions was distributed to a small group of five attendees. Small groups were charged with rank ordering a list of possible candidates in order of priority, adding new functions if necessary, and possibly deleting any functions judged to be inessential at the district level. Small groups reported to the whole group, and through these group discussions, a consensus list of essential public health functions at the district level emerged. Items chosen for inclusion as essential public health functions were then incorporated in the self-audit tool. This is the list of the 11 public health functions elected by the stakeholders. Now we describe audit instrument development. Existing essential public health assessment tools have been developed by the World Bank, PAHO, CDC, especially the NPHPSP and the Public Health Accreditation Board. 
these existing tools were reviewed for their appropriateness for African districts and for their ability to generate immediate feedback for practice improvement. The World Bank tool had been developed for use in Karnataka state in India. This tool was selected as an appropriate model because it focused on auditing the district level in a developing country setting. Prior to the first pilot test, the World Bank form was extensively revised to adapt it to an African application and a Portuguese translation was prepared. Initial edits mostly focused on wording with changes to reflect the Mozambican context rather than the Indian context. The tool was adapted into an interactive Excel spreadsheet whereby responses could be entered directly at the site and a graphical display of summary scores could be automatically entered into a linked sheet to produce instantaneous graphs. Here is a sample of the spreadsheet. A second round of revisions shortened the number of questions in the self-audit tool by almost 50% after the first pilot test was completed in November 2012. Participants complained that the self-audit tool was too long and time-consuming. Shortening occurred by cutting the number of items. The final format of the tool included sections for each of the 11 essential public health functions that consisted of indicators and sub-indicators for each essential public health function along with definitions of each essential public health function and explanations of each indicator. Sub-indicators in each section rolled up into the indicators in each section, which together rolled up to create a score for each essential public health function. The package of tools was pilot tested in district health offices across the country. Mozambique was in the process of decentralizing at the time, so assistance was needed in public health strengthening. The INS MISAUD had recently switched its focus from basic science research to public health and had been reorganized at the basis of supporting essential public health functions. So welcomed assistance in actually measuring and strengthening the essential public health functions at the district level. Some photos of pilot tests. Sites were selected by INS MISAL to include both strong and weak performing local health departments and the team from MISAL and JPIGO invited representatives from all divisions of the local health departments including the chief public health officers. Central MISAL staff were responsible for facilitating the workshops to the local health staff by both describing and administering the tool whereas CDC and JPIGO researchers observed implementation. An INS representative would lead the process of asking the questions contained in the assessment exercise, which was in Excel format. The spreadsheet was also projected on the wall, so all participants could see the questions and not just listen. The team made it clear to participants that the self-audit was a pilot exercise and encouraged them to ask questions and clarify any words or sentences that were unclear. He represents some feedback on the self-audit tool pilot. Of the districts visited, 100% shared a consensus that the most useful part of the pilot was not the self-audit itself, but the ability to use the graphical output from the self-audit to set priorities and a strategy for performance improvement. The self-audit tool automatically produced horizontal bar graphs displaying the summary score with each public health function and sub-function as an unweighted sum divided by the maximum score. These were reviewed and discussed by all the participants of the exercise. The teams were encouraged not to attempt to develop plans to improve all 11 public health functions at once, but to choose areas for immediate attention. Here is an example of results from an audit. Here represent another sample of bar graphs by essential public health function. For example, essential public health function number one, 
and essential public health function number two. Conclusion and key points. Collaborative self-audit and feedback is a method for encouraging group self-assessment of performance for the purposes of identifying weaknesses in performance and creating improvement plans to address these weaknesses and works by soliciting the participants' own intrinsic motivation for self-improvement. The self-audit process allows for comparison of performance against expectations. And instant provision of feedback fosters performance improvement partnership among the group and the coach. Key Ministry of Health stakeholders achieved consensus on a country-specific list of public health functions deemed to be essential at the district level in a meeting supported by Central Health Ministry. Districts place most value on being able to prioritize the public health functions they most desire to work on. Audit and feedback exercises help the departments of health and staff identify the priority goals for improvement and monitor their progress toward those goals. We acknowledge the United States President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, PEPFAR, and Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, Division of Global HIV AIDS Health Systems, which offered grant support for this research. And also, David Bishai, Melissa Sherry, Francisco Bofana, Amy Bohr, Monica Smith, Lionel Yambi, and Nagesh Bors. Here we provide a list of references used in this presentation, including the recently published paper on the Journal of Public Health Management and Practice, which provides a detailed account of the process described in this presentation. Thank you.